Hi, I'm Steve Clatton. I'm really excited and looking forward to my discussion with Russell Napier. Russell, welcome. What um, I would like to start off by, by doing is just painting the scene. Russell, you've explained to me in the past your views, which are quite radical, I think, about the forthcoming denouement of inflation, how equities will develop, how bonds will develop. Could you just briefly just paint a picture of, of your views? Yeah, I'll try and get it into a very short period of time so we can get on to discussing what it means for investment. But the simple way to explain this is that there have always been two ways of creating money. One is by a central bank, but most importantly, the other is by commercial banks. And the vast majority of all the money in the world is being created by commercial banks. Now, that sometimes that astounds people. But of course, the idea is that the central banks kind of control the commercial banks, and therefore they are in control at the rate at which the commercial banks create money. My entire thesis is that that changed in May. It changed April, May, and it changed through the use of what we call uh, government bank guarantee schemes or bank credit guarantee schemes. And it sounds like a very technocratic not very interesting, not very important shift, but actually it's fundamental. Uh, and last week, the uh, European Central Bank recognized this and they call it the sovereign bank corporate nexus, which is a classic piece of euphemism for the fact that money is now created by governments, not by central banks. Now, I can't persuade anybody of that, even though the ECB has now come out and said it as well. Uh, because once a government is in offering that guarantee to the bank, the bank begins to lend money. And we've seen spectacular uh, growth in bank credit in this you know, biggest recession in this country, this country being the United Kingdom since 1708, fastest bank credit growth probably we've ever seen, or certainly one of the highest we've ever seen in peacetime. How on earth do you reconcile those? The government guarantees it. So when those bank loans are made, money is created. And that has been the failure of central banking now for 12 years, that they absolutely failed to do that. They, they created a lot of their type of money, which is technically called a bank reserve and sits in the, in the banking system. But they didn't create a lot of what we uh, call our type of money. And by what I mean our type of money, I mean citizens, people who spend it, the stuff that we pick up in GDP and measure in GDP. And my goodness, the governments are doing a spectacular job at creating that. So to give you some numbers, the growth in the total number of dollars in the world is up 25% year on year. Uh, for the yen, we're looking uh, about 9% year on year. Uh, for the euro even, we're getting to 10% year on year. Uh, and these numbers, these growth rates have all doubled or tripled during COVID-19. So the first point is that it's a new mechanism. It is working. Historically, that level of money supply growth would normally create inflation. And there's a bit of People doubt that, but at that very high level, it's almost certainly the case. And then the second part, Steve, which we will no doubt talk a great deal about, is that that leads us to a time when bond yields are capped, when the state central bank regulator does not allow the bond yields to reflect the inflation outlook. And that is something called financial repression. And it leads us down a rabbit hole for a generation of government control mechanisms to try and force savers to own an asset they don't want to own. And if I started to talk about that in detail, it would take me 90 minutes. But uh, that is the outline of two things. One, inflation's coming because the control of money is coming, but it takes us to a world where we have to control the yield curve. And that takes us to a thing called financial repression. And then we're definitely not in Kansas anymore. Before we go down there, I mean, the, the, the way I look at this very simply is that the governments have got a lot of debt, they need to keep interest rates very low. And therefore, 